YouTube does a pretty good job at just about every video you throw at it. Facebook does a pretty terrible job at just about every video you throw at it. But Instagram can do a good job if you know how to optimize your videos correctly. In this video, we're gonna learn how to optimize and upload high quality video to Instagram. When it comes to Instagram video, the details really matter. Other platforms are much more forgiving when it comes to resolution, file size, frame rate, bit rate, pretty much everything. But Instagram is really particular. If your frame rate is too low, it'll look like your footage is skipping whenever you play it back. If your frame rate's too high, it'll look like your footage is choppy whenever you play it back. If your bitrate is too low, it'll look like your footage is aliased or pixelated whenever you're playing it back. But if your bitrate is too high, Instagram will convert it and there's a good chance that it will also be pixelated and aliased whenever Instagram converts it for you. If your video is too long, Instagram will just cut it off at 60 seconds for a normal video post. If your video is too small, people will have a hard time seeing it and they'll skip past it in the feed. And if Instagram sees people not watching your video, it's not going to promote it in the Instagram algorithm and you're gonna get less views. So the first part of this video is going to be just going over the settings that anyone can use in any editor and have good results on Instagram. The second part of the video will be my Premiere Pro workflow, and I found myself making the same files over and over whenever I started a new project. So I made a template for myself with some predefined folder structures and sequences that are already made that will be available at the end of the video, and I'll walk you through how to use it, and it really does save a lot of time. Going over the best Instagram video settings, first we're going to start with frame rate, and your frame rate should be at 30 frames per second. 24 will look like it's skipping, 60 will look choppy. For the codec, I would recommend H.264, and I always use MP4. MOVs are a little harder to convert, so MP4, if Instagram does have to convert your video, there will be less compression. For audio, I use ACC format. I usually use 48 uh, kilohertz. I use stereo over mono. Some people used to use mono, but Instagram can now use stereo video. The maximum file size is 15 megabytes, and the maximum video length is 60 seconds. For aspect ratio, I recommend using 4x5. 4x5 will take up the most screen real estate, and when you're in the feed, it actually is easier to see the video and you can see more details and it usually leads to people watching your videos longer. Pretty much all of my videos are shot in 16 by nine, and if I need some more real estate on the sides of the screen and I can't have it in a portrait orientation, I'll go to a one by one or a square video. Going less than a square uh, makes your video really hard to see on the screen, and it just leads to less watch time and your video doesn't get promoted in the algorithm as much. You can do a 16 by nine video, yeah, but your video probably won't perform as well as if it was a four by five aspect ratio. Those are the best specs to get high quality video on Instagram. The next part that people often overlook that even if they nail the specs, they can make a mistake here and that is getting the video from your computer to your phone. Because if you're using iMessage or any kind of like texting, you're probably degrading the quality of your video and you don't even know it. iMessage, if a video is too large, it'll just compress it. And I, I have no idea what that compression is. So I always uh, airdrop my footage or I use Dropbox. Uh, you can also use Box, Google Drive, if you have Slack, Slack usually doesn't uh, compress video when you send it. If you're really old school, you can just connect your phone to your computer with a cable and transfer the video that way, I guess, if that's something you're into. Uh, the last recommended method that I have, if you have an Instagram business account, is you can use a service like Buffer, and Buffer will actually take files from your computer and you can use their web browser uh, or Chrome extension and you can post to your Instagram business feed directly from your computer. And I've done that once with Aerial Guide and the video worked great. 
To go over my template file really quick, let's jump into Premiere. This is what my Premiere Pro template will look like when you first open it. A audio, footage, graphics, and sequences bin. And the sequences bin is the only thing that will have anything in there. And you'll have Instagram one to one, which is our square. Instagram four to five, which is our vertical video and Instagram story. I didn't get into Instagram stories in this video, but that is there if you want it. I brought some footage in and made a really quick timeline and just named it Rocky River Beach because believe it or not, this was taken at the beach. I made my really in-depth color grade on an adjustment layer, which I just put my Mavic 2 Pro HLG golden hour LUT on it, increased the vibrance a little bit, and now I think that's good enough to just call it a day. So after I'm happy with my edit, I select all of my footage in my native sequence and copy it over to my Instagram sequence and paste it. Here the video isn't going to look exactly right because I have to scale it and move it around. So I will scale this video down. So after I have all of my edits done and the video is exactly how I want it to look, I can go and press Command M or go to File, Export, Media. This brings up the Export Settings dialog box. Here we can go through the video and audio tabs and ensure that all of our Instagram settings are still correct. For the width and height, I have them set to 1080 by 1350. This is four x five aspect ratio for the vertical video. For the frame rate, I have it set to 30. For field order, I'd leave it at progressive and the aspect ratio, you should be having square pixels. If one of these is incorrect, you can hit this checkbox right here and go through and pick square pixels. Scrolling down to the bitrate settings, I usually set a constant bitrate and make sure the target bitrate is four megabits per second. Under the audio tab, make sure your audio format is ACC, the audio codec is ACC, and your sample rate is either 48,000 Hertz or 44.1. Honestly, I can't tell the difference, but I usually stick with 48,000 Hertz. The channel can be set to stereo, audio quality high, bitrate settings for audio, I always leave at 320. The last thing to check is our estimated file size, and right now we're at nine megabytes which is well within our 15 megabyte limit. So now we can hit export and export our video. If you don't wanna manually configure your export settings each time, I did make an export preset for square and vertical video. I'll also include my four x five and one x one aspect ratio export presets in the Premiere Pro template files below. I like using these presets because they are dependable and I don't have to match source and maybe one of the settings got a little messed up when I was doing something and if I didn't catch it I would have to re-export it but with a preset it's always the same and it's very repeatable and it's very dependable. I hope in the future they open it up so if you shoot in 24 frames per second and you upload it to Instagram it'll display in 24 frames per second correctly and it won't look like it's skipping or choppy or any of that nonsense. So I tried to keep this video as short as possible. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe here. I'll be putting out a lot more content on this channel. I'll be updating it regularly. So if you guys have any questions or you want me to make a video in particular, leave it down below and I will do my best to get to it. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.